What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Gen World. And um, this movie has taken my happiness. It took away my energy that I would have liked to use to rip this film apart. And that's mainly because it's so empty of personality, effort, or any attention-grabbing plot points of the game series. Darn. See, I'm not the biggest fan of Assassin's Creed as it is, but I like the second game. Brother Ezio, that's my guy. He, he, he was a likable man. That's the dude. But that's to my extent of the enjoyability of the series. But this is a personal feeling. Don't attack me. When I heard that the M rated game license was being magically transported to us in a PG 13 action flick starring some of the most talented actors <laughs> in the industry, my sides were heard by Satan. The first sin of this train wreck of a film is the over-reliance on the Abstergo, which is the present part of the movie. And one reason I don't like the games is because they throw a lot of this in there. The sections that take place in the present, they just show it too much. And um, I don't want to see real people in the present time. We, we we live in the present time. Excuse the dog hairs on me. I got a, I got a German Shepherd. She goes ham. I want to see over-the-top, stealth, smooth-ass combat keyword smooth we'll come back to that in a minute it was presented in this shaky cam like they use in the in the born movies but the born series is excellent and when it's used there it makes the action scenes a lot more tense it adds tension to the scenes it actually adds something to the film's creative process which i gotta give props to the director because it, it zones me in and it, shit is beautiful in this movie, in Assassin's Creed, it looks like a sped up slideshow of just random violence that merges hard to see effects and blends it with the past fighting scene. So you'll see Michael Fassbender fighting someone in the past, in the present time, and they merge it with these weird ass effects that make it hard to see what's even going on. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look dope. It's just straight hard to see. I'm sitting there with this headache, and I'm just like, wow, this is real. But uh, that's how the action works in the movie. Um, now, my personal issues with it, um, I don't know if other people have this issue, but this is just some personal things that, that ruined this movie for me, is the rating. And um, the lack of just the coherent violence, and it's covered up by those fast cuts and those terribly edited parts of the movie. Like, um, you can see in certain scenes, there was supposed to be more detailed kills, and it was just annoyingly cut right before impacts and blood was like horribly digitally removed. You can tell like there was just some scenes where it was somebody was supposed to get snapped all the way through to hell and they just cut it. You know what? Fuck spoilers. I don't even care because you don't need to see this damn movie. Don't waste your money on seeing this movie. Bootleg ain't worth it. It just ain't. Um, when Michael Fassbender got behind Scar... Um, to cut his throat. I don't know how he got there in the first place. Like, they show this quick cut of him realizing who he is and then all of the other assassins in the place. They be like, oh, hold on. We can do this in real life. This wasn't a game. And they just go batshit crazy and people die. A lot of people die very fast. Um, it wasn't entertaining. Michael Fassbender somehow gets behind Scar, cuts his throat, um, and then the robe, you can tell when it's on his throat. His throat gets cut, and then the robe is like left over his throat like this. So we're left with a shot that's there for about a good five or six seconds. They leave it on here, and it's just sitting there. Like, you just see him, like, gas red. You just see, like, a little red line, but it, it, everything is still intact. Like, his, his robe still looks intact. Wow. That's a death. But then he hits the ground, and then now we got blood out of nowhere. I was in awe, guys. The acting in this movie is the only thing I'm going to say was passable. Um, like I said, you got talented actors. You got Michael Fassbender, um, Jeremy Irons, um, my man that was in, uh, what was the name of that damn show that was that they get reruns on BET? I can't think of his name right now, but um, Omar. I'm going to call him Omar. That's Omar. But um, 
everybody they worked to the best of their ability to what they were given the script writing wasn't the best but they 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 stretched it as far as they could they really did they really stretched it i don't remember anyone's name that like the actual character names in the movie i don't remember a single one and i refuse to look it up because if a movie is compelling enough you shouldn't have issues remembering anyone's name but fuck this movie I've lost hope for video game movies done by big budget companies. Ubisoft, y'all are the most super Ellenist gathering ass game development company I have ever seen. I now see I used to respect you. I mean I still kind of respect y'all because Rayman Legends is one of the hardest platformers of all time. Rayman is dope. That's all y'all got right now. Am <laughs> I? Y'all fucking. <laughs> oh Lord. Y'all are fucking up. Leave this shit to the indie, to the fan films. Because um, I don't know if anybody has seen the Majora's Mask film, short film that was made on, like, it was basically just, it was a short film. I think it was like seven, eight minutes long. But it basically detailed how Skull Kid came in power with the mask, and they just detailed that whole opening. And this was an indie team these guys didn't do this shit for no money they did this just because they like majora's mask and they smashed it it was astonishing it was great everything about it was beautiful that's who i think needs to go ahead and continue to make these things because these big budget companies i don't know what's wrong with y'all but there's some drugs in the office y'all need y'all need to do something